So we know you're aware of this, but we just want to be 100% clear up front. You know, we've spoken to your parents, and that mm -hmm. was one reason why we were so eager to hear your perspective. Um, when we initially approached you, you declined our request for an interview. Mm -hmm. What changed? Felt like I needed time to consider the ramifications of my choice. I think that's important to know why we do what we do in our lives. So without making any rash or quick decisions, I think that it's important to consider all aspects of what kind of, this is a big, this is a big choice and making myself vulnerable to something that I actually didn't ask for, as you know, and I didn't seek this, but because of my parents' choices, it uh, came my way, and after consideration, I felt like it's best to put my side of the story forward because if you only hear one side, then you definitely will have a skewed point of view. And what is it that you most want to convey today? I think the biggest thing that I want to convey is that as an American citizen, I have a right as an, a female adult who is free in this country, I have a right to choose what type of avenue and means and way I want to worship God, as does every other American. They have the freedom of religion, and I think that that is what is most important and valuable to me. And it's really sad and unfortunate that at this time in my life, those that were closest to me want to compromise that and take it away from me just because I don't believe the same way that they do. So let's take a step back and just, you know, for people just becoming acquainted with this story, start at the beginning. Uh, tell me when you first heard about the World Mission Society Church of God. Um, it was 2007. And I was deciding for the first time in maybe three years to return to church. I had left church because I felt like no church could provide me with answers to questions I had about the Bible. No church was able to provide a community. Even though my whole life I grew up under my parents' nurturing and care and love, and they promoted Christianity, but I never felt satisfied in any of the other churches that I attended. So there was a time in my college career that I decided to just step back and search for God on my own and felt also that was unsatisfying. So in 2007, I was deciding for myself to look for a new church to participate in studying the Bible. And the Church of God is what became my home of faith where all the answers to my questions to the Bible were given. And I was able to realize truly my purpose. It was my absolute happiness. So I can imagine, or you can imagine, if you found something that is what you felt like you were looking for your whole life, you're naturally going to want to share it with those closest to you. And who was it that first told you about the church? It was a, an acquaintance at Panera Bread. Mm -hmm. What was that conversation like? He started talking to me about um, the Bible, particularly the topic of Heavenly Mother. Um, and it was something that I had not heard, but as he showed me through the Bible, it was very clear, it's very evident that from Genesis to Revelation, the entire Bible testifies that there is not just male image of God, which most mainstream Christianity believes in God the Father, or as you may also know, the Trinity, but there is a female God testified in the Bible that God the Mother is testified to also be made known to her children, just like each you and I were both given life through our mom and dad, and that's physical, but God gave us this physical earth to teach us about the spiritual invisible world. What is it that most appealed to you about the World Mission Society Church of God's beliefs? What most appealed to me? <laughs> Yeah, it's hard for me to pinpoint it when you feel there's a lacking in every other place of worship that you go to and you finally found, find it. I'm sure that other people, regardless of their denomination or their choice of faith, they once they find where they feel that they fit, it's hard to just pinpoint one thing because it's everything that makes the whole experience worthwhile. Every 
question is answered through the Bible, every, my understanding of why I'm here on this earth, you know, everything finds its fulfillment. So it's really difficult for me to just pick out one piece of a grand puzzle, I guess. And one thing you mentioned specifically, even going back to that initial conversation, sure. was God the Mother. Yeah. What appealed to you about the belief in God the Mother? Well, as everything in the Church of God, it was in the Bible. And I'll be honest, Ronan, from my whole life from childhood, I was taught to believe in the Bible and even went to a Christian university and studied the Bible, but no one was able to actually teach it as clearly as it was taught to me that day. And to see is very clear. It's not confusing. It's not complicated. It's actually science and history proves the Bible to be true. And that's what was so amazing is that it's right there before me. It wasn't, oh, I'll pray about it. When you ask questions in, in a lot of the churches I went to, oh, pray about it. They'll give, God will give you an answer. But actually, God gave us the answers in the Bible. Everything in the Bible was meant, the purpose of the Bible is to lead us to know Christ. That's why God allowed the 66 books of the Bible to exist. You know, you read science books because you want to understand science. You read history books so you can know history. But the purpose of the Bible is actually to lead us to Christ, who is the Savior, who can give us salvation. Then what appealed about Heavenly Mother is that she's testified as the Savior in the last age. And this might sound new to you, but the Bible is broken up, broken up into three ages. There's the age of the Father, which God is known, and this might be familiar with you to you, is as Jehovah God. It's common knowledge. Most people know that title and that name of God. But that very God, 2,000 years ago, came to this earth in the flesh as a Jewish man, probably around our age, right, at that time. So that's Jesus Christ, which mainstream Christianity, they believe without even question that this 33, 30-year-old 30, 30 man was God incarnate. And they don't raise any questions because, oh, it's in the Bible. But here's, here's where you run into a true test of faith. The Bible continues to prophesy that Christ will come again, and it prophesied that Christ would not come alone, but Christ would come with God the Mother, the female image of God. And at, that's the, the, the pivotal moment that we're living in now is the age of the Holy Spirit, as John mentioned earlier, Holy Spirit meaning male image of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the bride is the female image of God. So what appealed the most to me is these are the saviors in this age, that in order for us to receive their salvation that comes same as it came from Jehovah, same as it came from Jesus, is now we're at this time where we have to accept Christ, Ansang Hong, and Heavenly Mother. That's what the Bible prophesies about. So what appeals to me the most is it's real. I used to think that the Bible just, oh, it ended 2,000 years ago, but it's, it's real. It actually is applicable to everyone in this generation, more so than, than you would believe. <laughs> so you're at Panera Bread. Yeah. You said this was after college, right? Yes, I graduated already. I was working. Mm -hmm. And this acquaintance tells you mm -hmm. about God the Mother. Was there a part of you that, that took time to adjust to that? What was your initial reaction? It w of course, it was, it was shocking. How could I have lived my whole life without realizing on the first page of the Bible, it said, God said, let us make man in our image, our likeness. I mean, that's elementary, singular versus plural. But from the beginning, I, I was shocked. Yeah, how could I live my whole life and not know about Heavenly Mother? Because the answer to that is there's a time for everything. And it was, it was awesome to finally see the Bible for what it was meant to be. Have you personally met Heavenly Mother? Yes, I have. What was that experience like? Uh, it's hard to explain in words. I mean, you meet the one who created you. I'm sure you ask any Christian nowadays, how would you like to meet Christ? Or what time would you want to go back in time if you could pick one time? And I think a lot of them would choose the time when Jesus was on this earth. But we're fortunate enough that Christ is on this earth. God can do anything. God can come however God wants, but God came 
in these last days as a female. I think God is more powerful than any limitations we could ever put on God. So that time when I met her, it was, it's inexpressible because she knows everything about me more than I know myself. So it's a very broad and open-ended question you asked me, but it, there's really, it's hard to explain what it's like. Um, what it was a while ago, so. Hmm. I love you. Um, I mean, specifically, she didn't speak much directly to me, you know? There's a group, it's, as you saw in the video, the groups go take trips there, so it's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one time, so. What does the World Mission Society Church of God mean to you? Hmm. The Church of God, believe, it means... Um, It's everything. It's an avenue of, it's a place where I can express my faith towards God, which is important to me. I'm sure that there's people listening to this, they also found that for them, but maybe it's in a different form. But for me, the World Mission Society Church of God is everything. It's the place where I met true God, and I can worship the God that created me. And what's your role in the church? Um, I attend the church. I do various activities. As you saw, the volunteer services, I definitely volunteer because I find fulfillment in that and satisfaction in giving back to others when we don't ask anything in return. There's no expectation of anything from anyone, but I, I would say serving, giving of my time. Have you ever acted as an official spokesperson or an informal spokesperson for the church? Um, we have had a TV show and yes, I was on the television show that we had, WMS-TV. So I don't know if that's what you're referring to, if you've been exposed to that or not. But I, was just, I was wondering what yeah. the full range is. Sure, of, uh, yeah, there's various activities, various yeah. types of ways you can be involved. I did play also in the orchestra for a time. I no what longer do you play? the trumpet. So I'm no longer doing that because I'm just uh, find time to do other things. But um, yeah. There's various activities inside the church that you can participate in, soccer league, different things. For someone who knows nothing about the World Mission Society Church of God, for someone just coming to this, mm -hmm. how would you describe it? Okay. Uh, the World Mission Society Church of God is a place which keeps the commands of God and teaches the Bible and allows people to choose whether they want to follow that or not and is open to anyone of any age, any nationality, any anyone. <laughs> As you saw also, we're all throughout the world. So anyone who's willing and wants to come to study and wants to question about the Bible, um, we, we're a place of comfort, a place of home, a place to worship God as Christ taught in the Bible. And how would you describe the, the core beliefs of the church? Well, as, you've, as we've already discussed, one of the core beliefs is that the saviors in this age are the second coming of Christ and Heavenly Mother. And we also keep the feast of God according to the Bible, which is also different from mainstream Christianity. Rather than worshiping on Sunday, we actually worship on Sabbath, Saturday, which is taught by Jesus Christ himself. We also keep the Passover once a year, according to the Bible. And then there's also other feasts of God as well. Do you believe the world is going to end soon? Nobody knows when the world's going to end. Everyone has their own convictions and should live their life in peace with themselves, whether, whether it ends in, we don't know, no one knows when it's gonna end, but all that's important to me is that I live my life in accordance with the way that I feel I should. And that's what the Church of God promotes, is salvation and receiving um, salvation no matter when, when that's gonna happen. It could happen whenever. For individually, it could happen tomorrow. We don't know, I, car, we could, I could get in a car accident when I leave this place. You know, No one knows that that time frame when this is going to happen. Have your beliefs on that changed at all? Was there a point in time when you thought that the end was coming soon or at a specific point in time? 
No, I never felt like I, there's never been a time where I thought, oh, it's going to end now, or it's going to, I never thought that. And neither was I taught that in the church of God. We were never taught a day because the Bible teaches that no one knows the day. So how can we go against the Bible? So going back even further, yeah. um, you talked about growing up on a farm yes. in a pretty rural area. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your childhood. Was it a happy childhood? I mean, I think Ronan, every family has its complications. Every family has its disagreements and disputes. Um, I, I, I grew up as a normal kid. I had very loving parents and they raised me up well. And it was, yeah, I, didn't, I don't have any regrets about my childhood. And um, so I, I guess, I don't know if you want more details about what I would do every day. <laughs> well, was it a religious childhood? Um, they took us to church. Um, they, my parents, they took me and my brothers to church. Um, I know for my mom, she grew up Catholic, but decided not to follow that as she became an adult, even though her parents continued in Catholicism. And I'm not sure my dad's upbringing, but they decided to bring us up together, just going to the community church. I, I don't think it really had a denomination. It was just a Christian church that worshiped on Sunday. That was my childhood. And growing up, what were your relationships with your parents like? Typical. I mean, I, I definitely had, uh, you know, fights with my mom and my dad, as, as any teen or adolescent would have. Um, I'm no different than anyone else out there, you know. Uh, everyone has those difficult moments with their parents, but I would say it was, it was fine. It was a good relationship. They supported me in my you know, in my school, in my sports, everything I did. And, um, uh, let me just, sorry, sorry. Do you mind if I just ask that question? No, again? I don't mind at all. Just, <laughs> what, what was your relationship with your parents like when you were growing up? Um, typical. I would say, I, would, I wouldn't say my relationship with my parents was any different than anyone else out there. Um, we had our disagreements, we had our arguments, you know, our fights, um, but it was, my parents supported me as I grew up and, you know, attended my sporting events. They went to my, you know, graduation as any parents would. Um, you know, they took care of me and they raised me up to be a outstanding adult. And, and your relationship with your brother, were you close with him? Um, I have two brothers and yeah, we grew up, I, I wouldn't say we we're like besties or close friends, but we grew up, we were, we were relatively close. I mean, I was the only sister, so, you know, sometimes they ganged up on me, but yeah. I grew up with seven sisters. Oh my. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that is in reverse. When you first got involved with the World Mission Society Church of God, how did your parents react? Um, they were a little shocked to find out that I didn't believe the same way that they did. And it was, um, from the beginning, I shared my faith with them first from anyone else in my life. And um, I never once expected them to believe what I, ex what I believe. I, I would love to share it with them. That's it. I don't have any expectation further from that. Um, but their reaction was discouraging, to say the least. It was actually very discouraging. And what was that reaction? to uh, consider what my actions are actually going to, to do. They were not uh, supportive of my own choice of faith. They uh, were actually upset and uh, seemed angry because I wasn't going along with what they had raised me to believe. So I can assure you that that was not easy and I'm sure that I'm not the only one in this world <laughs> that has a difference of belief as she gets older and decides for herself as an adult to believe something different. I'm sure there's many similar situations and maybe someone watching now that also has a disagreement with their parents based on their choice of faith. And um, that was pretty near the beginning of my attendance to the Church of God. Your parents and one of your brothers, Bob, 
said that after you joined the church, you began slipping away from them, that you were sleep deprived, that you were not yourself, that you talked to them less. Why do they say that? I want you to imagine being locked in a hotel room against your own free will, and your entire family is there and tells you you cannot leave the hotel room until you decide to see a cult counselor. And then you tell me that it's easy to trust your family after they do that to you. This happened to me. I never told my family to change their beliefs. I never asked them to believe what I believe, but they have discriminated against me from the beginning. And their intolerance of my choice of faith makes it impossible to have a relationship with them. Why did I slip away and not choose to talk to them? Because every word that comes out of my mouth, they consider it a lie. Every word that comes out of my mouth, they don't believe. How can you have a relationship with someone who thinks you're brainwashed, who thinks you're under another person's control? It's not actually possible because everything that they do is trying to get you to take a step away from what you have found the most fulfilling in your life. This is something that I think deserves to be publicized because it's not right. Their intolerance for what I want to believe is what, is what has caused me to step away, not the church. I never asked them to join this church. I never asked them to change their beliefs, but they're expecting me to change and stop believing what I have found the most fulfilling in my life. What if someone places expectations upon you, Ronan? Is it easy to be around them? It's not, and especially if it's your family. I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy that I'm not close with my family, but there's many members in the Church of God who have a very close relationship with their family, even though they don't believe in the same thing. But my parents have chosen to embarrass me on national television and attack my faith, a right of the, the First Amendment. This is my right. I'm an adult, I'm not a child. I can choose what I wanna believe in. I never hurt anyone. I never did anything against anyone. But they've decided to make it their life ambition to attack my faith. Why do you think that is? I think it's because they've talked to outside sources who have a negative view of the church. And they've chosen to believe those sources rather than their own daughter, their own flesh and blood. And when they use, when your parents use that word, brainwashed, how do you respond to that? How can I, I can't even respond to, to that. They're undermining my own intelligence. I'm, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not controlled by anyone other than myself. And I make my own decisions in life. And I think I turned out OK. And I think that they should be proud of the daughter that they have that serves their country and worships and fears God and considers her, her community. For them to say that to me, it hurts a lot. And when your parents and your brother Bob say, you're not yourself, you seem different, that there is a, a different version of Rebecca that they don't recognize as their own loved one. Why do you think that is? What are they seeing in you? I think, as I've just mentioned, it's a cause of their intolerance for my faith. And if you put, if you put rose-colored glasses, green-colored glasses on, everything will seem green to you. 
then my entire family has put glasses on and are choosing to view everything I do as a direct result of the church and everything I do as a direct result of being a member of this church when they don't see how their own actions are affecting me, how their own perception of my faith and discrimination against my faith is causing me to not actually want a relationship with them. It's not the church itself, but it's their viewpoint of me. They claim that they don't want me to change my faith, but their actions are showing otherwise with a direct attack against my church and my faith. One of the things your parents claim is that you were placed into what they call an arranged marriage with uh, a Korean man who didn't speak much English. Mm -hmm. Any truth to any of that? It's absolutely wrong. I fell in love with James and people fall out of love. So it, is, it was not a forced marriage by any means at all. We fell in love with each other, we met and decided not to continue our relationship. <laughs> Rebecca, we've spoken to several former members now who have given us a view of the church fairly similar to your parents' view, who say that they lost years of their life, that they now regret, that they were brainwashed, they use that word. Why do you think these stories seem to be coming out of former members? I'm not sure why. I'm sure every situation is different. Um, but I, as far as I know, it's, it's actually not a, a large group of people, but it's a very small minority that's just, uh, I guess you could say, barking really loud and spreading their false rumors every possible means, everywhere they can possibly think. And um, I don't know every angle of every single story of ex-members, but if, in the case of even a relationship, if you get a divorce and you have an ex-husband or an ex-wife, I don't think you're gonna talk great about the other person. Then these people invested time of their life by their choice in the World Mission Society Church of God and at a time decided, I don't wanna go there anymore. It's not, it's not for me. So naturally, they may re regret that they spent some time of their life investing in something that they're no longer investing in. It's kind of common sense that they chose all along to invest and then decided not to. So uh, that's my assumption. I don't, I don't know much more about every ex-member. All, all churches, I think, on this earth, they have members, and then some members decide to leave. I think that's pretty common. So, One allegation that we've mm -hmm. heard from several former members is that members are encouraged to empty their savings accounts out, that they're giving everything they have to the church financially. I, and what's the question? Is that true? It's not. I think that that's a little crazy. No one in the church teaches to empty your savings account. Everyone is free to give according to how they feel and what they want to give. I think to, to do such a act like that would be not wise because <laughs> you need your savings <laughs> to live your life. So I, I never was taught that and no one ever told me to empty my savings into the church. To the extent you feel comfortable with answering, to, to what extent are you tithing? Are, are you giving a substantial portion of, of what you have to the church? I, as taught in the Bible, I tithe according to the command of God. But that's nothing different from what I did ever since I was little. My parents taught me to do the same, and regardless of denomination of faith. I, I want to just read for you something that your brother Bob told me. This is an exact quote. I asked him, if you could say one thing to your sister right now, what would it be? And Bob said, it would be, Becky, we love you. Just get out. You've missed way too much, and it's painful. It really is painful not having you around. What do you say to that? Bob, I love you a lot, but I wish that your perspective of me wasn't skewed and based on other people's opinions. 
I wish that you would believe me and trust me and not listen to complete strangers rather than your own sister. Bob talked about you beginning to miss family Christmases and other gatherings. Um, and one thing that I think loomed large for him was you are missing his wedding. And as he described it, Bob said there were tickets booked, uh, you were going to come to his wedding. And then he was devastated when you didn't come. Mm -hmm. um, and he said you left a voicemail and seemed upset that, that you couldn't come because of the church and that you attributed it to the church. Tell me about that experience. I left him a voicemail because I wanted him to know that I love him very much. And I chose not to go to the wedding based on personal circumstances at that time, having nothing to do with the church. Do you think he'll ever understand why that was? Well, after the wedding, a little bit afterwards, I went out to see them and congratulate them. But I don't think he'll ever understand because it was after that that he and my sister-in-law and my family locked me in a hotel room. Not taking my visit as sincere, not taking my efforts as sincere because it didn't fulfill or meet their expectation of what they wanted. I'm not sure. I've tried after them locking me in the hotel to forgive them and made efforts to see them, but it doesn't seem like anything you do is enough. I've asked your parents about why they're doing what they're doing, why they feel so passionately about this. Mm -hmm. And one thing your mother told me, this is a quote from her, when she finally does wake up, referring to you, Rebecca, and realizes what she's been doing, I just hope she doesn't say to us, why didn't you try more, try harder to get me out because I really wanted to get out, but I just couldn't. I would say to her, Mom, I hope you wake up and realize that I am not in a cult and I am not brainwashed and I believe the Bible. I don't understand how, because I choose as an adult to practice my faith differently from you, that you want to label me in such a way and undermine my intelligence. I hope that you wake up, Mom, and realize that I love you. And I wish you would stop listening to other people and start listening to me and believe what I say and trust me. That's what I would say at least, probably more. When your parents drove across the country, sorry, do you need a second? I'm okay. I know this is hard to talk about. Thank you for being so candid about uh, this. When your parents drove across the country and came to see you uh -huh. most recently, what was your reaction? Um, shocked. Um, but they had made it pretty clear to me that, that they don't want me to believe this differently from them. So it's hard to be around them, Ronan. It's really hard because they don't accept my beliefs and they don't tolerate my beliefs even though they're different. Um, And as it was later revealed to me, it was actually a media trap. So. Uh, do you feel they're giving you an ultimatum, the church or them? Yes, I do. 
They've made it pretty clear in their letters, some of which you have copies of, some of which maybe you don't. They want me to take a break from what I believe in. I never once asked them to take a break from what they believe in. Every single American on this, in this country has a right to believe what they want to believe. But there's a, this is a huge problem with this intolerance and now discrimination just because I believe differently than them. So yes, it feels very much like an ultimatum. Choose your faith in God the Mother and Second Coming Christ or choose us as your parents. But if you want to be a member of the Church of God, then they, they don't tolerate me. As a, it's, they're undermining my intelligence and make me, they're dehumanizing me as if I have no right to believe what I want to believe. Imagine if you were put in that situation where you were forced to do something that you, at the core of your belief, you don't want to do, but you were forced to do it, and they wouldn't let you out of a hotel room until you choose to do so. Is this, is this proper in America to now, you're allowed to kidnap your own adult children and lock them up somewhere? I think that this is a big problem. Do you feel you were kidnapped? I wouldn't label it as kidnapping, but it was definitely a few hours that we were locked in a hotel room where my older brother would not let me out until I decided to see a cult counselor. I think there's a severe problem if your parents are doing that to you and stripping you of your right as an American to believe what you want to believe. And when your siblings say, this is taking away the life you once had, that they miss you. When your mother says with tears in her eyes, I'm fighting for Rebecca because I'm afraid she's gonna wake up one day and say, you didn't do enough to help me. Is there a chance that they're right? Absolutely not. They're not. Because I know why I believe what I believe. I can defend my faith, absolutely. And I don't regret my faith in God. I found absolute fulfillment and satisfaction in what I believe in. And um, I'm just sorry that they don't see it that way, that they have a different perspective. They are allowed to have their own beliefs, and I never once force them to believe anything that they don't want to believe. But they're doing that to me. And when you look at the stories from some of those former members, who did wake up at some point in their life and come to regret the time they spent in this group. Any doubt or worry that that could be you someday? No, not at all. Not at all. We don't have the time now to talk about it, but even those kind of situations are prophesied in the Bible. <laughs> so I'm not worried, and uh, I'm not concerned that that's going to happen to me because that's not me. T tell me about it being prophesied in the Bible that there's temptation to be led astray or that there's, there's a doubt of that kind? No, it's just we believe the truth of the Bible and there's words in the Bible that say that some will leave the faith. Very simple. Most Christians also are aware of that passage of the Bible. So it's not anything necessarily different, but I know 100% that Christ, Unsung Hong, and Heavenly Mother are God incarnate in these last days. And we don't know, as I already mentioned, we don't know when the world will end, but I, I know I'm living my life correct in the viewpoint of myself and God. There are critics all the time, all around us, everywhere we go, there's critics. And unfortunately, in my case, it is my own family. Do you love your parents? Absolutely. Do you wanna have a relationship with them? Of course. Of course I do. It's impossible to have a relationship with someone when every word you say they think is being controlled by someone else. Think about it. How can you relate to someone who thinks you're being manipulated, controlled, they don't trust you? It, it is impossible. What's the one thing you wish your family understood about you? I wish that Hmm. 
I wish they would understand from my point of view. And I know that they asked me to put myself in their shoes, and I have tried. But I want them to take a step and look at themselves and how they're viewing me and how their own actions are affecting our relationship. And uh, consider what kind of outside influences are affecting how they see me now. Instead of blaming and using the church as a scapegoat of maybe family matters that would exist regardless. Do you think that this rift between yourself and your family would exist without the World Mission Society Church of God? Families have complications all the time. Even my brother was estranged from our parents for a period of his life, and he didn't talk to them. So it's unknown. No one knows. But I can say that the riff is attributed to their intolerance of my faith. What's next? What would it take for you to have that relationship you just said you want with your family again? Tolerance, not expecting me to take a break from what I want to believe in and follow and practice. Um, I would say that's, that's the biggest thing and uh, to consider how their actions are affecting us too. It takes two parties in a relationship. Is there anything else you want to add that you haven't had the chance to say? No, 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 no. <laughs> Take your time. I think I've said everything I need to say. I think that I've conveyed my heart and I hope that the viewers can see more clearly that the World Mission Society Church of God is an outstanding church in the community and um, that even though there are critics and slanderers and there are negative viewpoints. It's no different than any other church or even Christianity 2,000 years ago. At that time, there were also critics, slanderers, and harmful things said to the believers at that time. Now it's so easy for people to believe in a uh, Jewish man as their savior who lived 2,000 years ago, but just because that happened 2,000 years ago and it's in the Bible. Uh, it's easy to put our faith maybe in words on page, but when God comes in the flesh, it's a, as I mentioned, a test of faith, but the Bible does testify about Heavenly Mother and Christ on Sung Hong, and even though it seems different, I would hope that at least all the Americans watching this would have a tolerance of faith and that they would respect the First Amendment, and um, even though it's different, I think we deserve that respect from our fellow Americans, and that's what I want to give to everyone else as well, respect and not judge them or belittle them just because they believe differently from me. And for those who do believe differently, have that kind of a negative view that you're talking about. You just call them the, the slanderers, the doubters. Are you angry at those people? No. 
do you think that it is the right choice that on at least one occasion the World Mission Society Church of God uh, initiated legal action against that kind of criticism? I, I don't know much about the lawsuits. Hon honestly, I cannot say, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I just know the particular member who is involved, or ex-member rather. That's, I just know her by name. I never met her actually in church, so. And to the extent that you've seen the kinds of allegations out there on the internet and in other forums from that member and others, mm -hmm. How do you respond to her? How do you respond to others in that category? Do you have a message for them? Um, I, I don't necessarily have a specific message for them. They will choose to do what they would like to do with their lives as I also would like to do with my life what I want to do with my life. So. Thank you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Thank you for taking the time. And I, I know it's a grueling conversation with a lot of heavy personal yeah. topics. Um, I, I really appreciate your sitting down. Thank you. For your whole life, you're naturally going to want to share it with those closest to you. A and who was it that first told you about the church? It was a, an acquaintance at Panera Bread. Mm -hmm. What was that conversation like? He started talking to me about um, the Bible, particularly the topic of Heavenly Mother. Um, and it was something that I had not heard, but as he showed me through the Bible, it was very clear, it's very evident that from Genesis to Revelation, the entire Bible testifies that there is not just male image of God, which most mainstream Christianity believes in God the Father, or as you may also know, the Trinity, but there is a female God testified in the Bible that God the Mother is testified to also be made known to her children, just like each, you and I were both given life through our mom and dad, and that's physical, but God gave us this physical earth to teach us about the spiritual invisible world. What is it that most appealed to you about the World Mission Society Church of God's beliefs? And what is it that you most want to convey today? I think the biggest thing that I want to convey is that as an American citizen, I have a right as an, a female adult who is free in this country, I have a right to choose what type of avenue and means and way I want to worship God, as does every other American. They have the freedom of religion, and I think that that is what is most important and valuable to me, and it's really sad and unfortunate that at this time in my life, those that were closest to me want to compromise that and take it away from me just because I don't believe the same way that they do. So let's take a step back and just, you know, for people just becoming acquainted with this story, start at the beginning. Uh, tell me when you first heard about the World Mission Society Church of God. Um, it was 2007, and I was deciding what most appealed to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard for me to pinpoint it when you feel there's a lacking in every other place of worship that you go to and you finally found, find it. I'm sure that other people, regardless of their denomination or their choice of faith, they once they find where they feel that they fit, it's hard to just pinpoint one thing because it's everything that makes the whole experience worthwhile. Every question is answered through the Bible, every my understanding of why I'm here on this earth, you know, everything finds its fulfillment. So it's really difficult for me to just pick out one piece of a grand puzzle, I guess. And one thing you mentioned specifically, even going back to that initial conversation, sure. was God the Mother. Yeah. What appealed to you about the belief in God the Mother? Well, as everything in the Church of God, it was in the Bible. And I'll be honest, Ronan, from my whole life from childhood, I was taught to believe in the Bible and even went to a Christian. So we know you're aware of this, but we just want to be 100% clear up front. You know, we've spoken to your parents, and that mm -hmm. was one reason why we were so eager to hear your perspective. Um, when we initially approached you, you declined our request for an interview. Mm -hmm. What changed? 
felt like I needed time to consider the ramifications of my choice. I think that's important to know why we do what we do in our lives. So without making any rash or quick decisions, I think that it's important to consider all aspects of what kind of, this is a big, this is a big choice and making myself vulnerable to something that I actually didn't ask for, as you know. And I didn't seek this, but because of my parents' choices, it uh, came my way. And after consideration, I felt like it's best to put my side of the story forward because if you only hear one side, then you definitely will have a skewed point of view. For the first time in maybe three years to return to church, I had left church because I felt like no church could provide me with answers to questions I had about the Bible. No church was able to provide a community. Even though my whole life I grew up under my parents' nurturing and care and love and they promoted Christianity, but I never felt satisfied in any of the other churches that I attended. So there was a time in my college career that I decided to just step back and search for God on my own and felt also, that was unsatisfying. So in 2007, I was deciding for myself to look for a new church to participate in studying the Bible. And the Church of God is what became my home of faith, where all the answers to my questions to the Bible were given. And I was able to realize truly my purpose. It was my absolute happiness. So I can imagine, or you can imagine, if you found something that is what you felt like you were looking 